Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Believe You Are a Good Mom podcast. I'm Emily Wardrop from Drop the Word Life Coaching, where we help moms of young kids drop power struggle wars to create more peace in their parenting. Do you want to be a good mom? I will tell you the one simple secret of how to be a good mom. You already are. Don't believe me? You've come to the right place. I'm glad you're here. I've got you. Because when you truly believe you are a good mom, everything will change for you as you live into the truth of who you've always been. Let's get started. Good morning. It's time for another episode. I don't know if it's morning when you're listening, but it's early morning when I'm recording, so I will continue to say that. (laughs) So, um, let's get funky. I have been percolating on this idea for a while, and I didn't think it was ready yet, but this morning I started to write down ideas, and it turns out this is going to could potentially go on longer than 30 minutes. (laughs) I got a lot of ideas. So it's all sort of in the percolating state. So be ready for my spastastic. Um, Anyway, here we go. So ride the funk. That might be what I name it, but I wanted to name it. Let's get funky either way. So here's the thing. Um, Well, first, let me start with a childhood story. Those are the best, right? Grandma always says, back when I was a little girl. (laughs) She's like, okay, we're getting a grandma little girl story now. Um, So back when I was a little girl, (laughs) my sister and I had these little radios, right? And um, they had a cassette player on it. And we thought it was the coolest thing that you could hit record to record a song from the radio onto a cassette. So I literally had cassettes full of the same song over and over and over. <laughs> this is my favorite song. Every time it came on the radio, I'd hit record again. So then I could just put in that cassette and listen to it when I wanted to hear my favorite song. Because the alternative was to wait for it to come on on the radio. And you never know when that's going to happen. And, um, yes, I could buy cassettes in those days. <laughs> I know this all sounds very archaic, but, um, or whatever that word is. Um, and I did have a cassette of Paula Abdul for every year girl, which got destroyed and glued back together and still worked taped back together. Whatever we did, it was a miracle. <laughs> anyway, um, The point of this childhood story is that one day my sister and I got in this debate about whether the word funky was a bad word or not, because funky does sound like a word that we knew was bad, but we didn't know if that one was bad or not. So I still feel a little bit funky saying funky because there's some childhood conditioning about, is this a bad word or not? Am I allowed to say this? So there's my random story. But in general, the word funk, I'm not that scared of saying it. And there's other words that I am more scared of labeling myself with, of um, of an experience that I'm going through. Like, I would much rather say I'm in a funk than I'm feeling depressed. And some people even call a funk a walking depression. And the BD word is something I am afraid of, <laughs> I'll admit to you right now. And so I'll call it a funk over depression any day, Okay. So it doesn't matter. It's It only matters to you what your own brain is making things mean and all the things. So that's why we do coaching, right? Because this is just a one-sided conversation about me. But if you want to get leverage applying it to you and your thoughts, um, sign up for coaching, okay? Or at least um, a free call with me. Drop the com forward slash appointments. Love to talk to you about what you're going through. For me, I just think of it as a funk. Okay. And the message, let me tell you the thesis of this podcast is that it is not a problem. Okay. It's not a problem to have any mood, to have any emotion, to feel like you're stuck in an emotion or series of emotions, which we would label a mood for any amount of time for whatever the whole experience. It's not a problem. Okay. So Um, I for sure would never label myself as depressed. What I have gotten closer to accepting (laughs) is the sad diagnosis, right? Seasonal something depression, (laughs) seasonal, um, good night. Can't even think. So, um, seasonal depression, I can, I can buy that for sure (laughs) because I can see the seasons very clearly in my mind, in my history, in my life of, um, certain seasons 
are a little gloomier, right? And you just feel a little gloomier. And not everyone does, but enough people do that you don't make it a problem because it's normal, right? Some people like to live in Washington State in the rain, in the clouds, or or Alaska or certain areas of the earth where there's like only a couple hours of sunshine a day and sometimes of the year. It's like, what? <laughs> I cannot even imagine. I'm like, sunny CA or Florida or something for me, please. Yes. I have considered living in Arizona. So um, anyway, I, um, I'll, I'll give you that, that, that it coordinates with the season, right? And we're going to talk a lot about seasons today because uh, seasons come from God. And I'm not going to argue with him <laughs> about his plan and the way he made us, right? So I love to look at nature and learn more about my divine nature from the nature that he's put around me, right? So if he's designed the earth to be in balance, I like to think about the word balance because if you live in a state that has four seasons, it feels very balanced. Um, when you're in the middle of the season, it doesn't feel so balanced. You feel depressed because it's gloomy January <laughs> and the snow is all gross and it's just been cold for way too long and <laughs> we just need some sunshine and all the things, right? And so it doesn't feel balanced when you're in the thick of the season or maybe you start getting sick of summer when it's just been like so hot for so long and you can't even go outside at all because it's so hot different seasons, different strokes for different folks. Right. But, um, that's what's so fun about it is that we're all so individual and nature is like that too. And you can see it. And so you know that it's not a problem, right? That's the point of this message is that it's not a problem because God created it that way. So it's all part of the plan. So it's all good. Okay. It's all good. It's not fine. That's what a lot of people <laughs> like always think of my one friend who's always like, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> when she's telling me things that are so not fine. I'm like, are you joking me right now? So she always blasters them over with it's fine, which works for her. And so it's fine. It's not a problem. But I'm just saying mm. that fine doesn't work for me because of the Italian job. Do you know this movie? I love it so much. <laughs> My brother and I used to watch it just like over and over and over. So it's funny that I don't do repeats. I think that I don't do repeats, but I just gave you two examples <laughs> of repeating songs on cassettes and watching that movie over and over. I guess I do repeats more than I want to admit. Okay. Anyway, sidebar over. Okay. So in the Italian job, fine is an acronym for freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. <laughs> so every time I'm like, it's fine. I'm like, no, no, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. So, um, so I'm thinking about all this stuff this morning and I'm like, I guess I'm ready. <laughs> Pardon me to record this podcast about the funk. And I open up my handy journal, which is technically a planner mm. from Jody Moore's Business Minded program. She gives you a planner and I don't use it as a planner. I use it as a journal because that is just the story of my brain right now. <laughs> like I'm not into planning, but I am into journaling. <laughs> and so it continues to be this amazing sign from heaven whenever the cute little Jody quote on the side of the book matches what I'm planning on talking about. So I spent all morning thinking, it's not a problem. It's all good. That's like the point of this message. And then I turned to the page where the classic Jody thought that every time I think it, I think, yeah, yeah, that came from Jody. And it's right here on the page. You got to be kidding me. It's such a sign. Nothing has gone wrong, right? So that is the point <clears throat> that nothing has gone wrong here. I've given you this hack before when we were talking about, um, the shame blame trap. So the way to get out of shaming yourself or blaming other people when you're tired of shaming yourself <laughs> is that nothing's gone wrong. Okay. So if there's no blame or shame to be had, it's because nothing's gone wrong. The reason you're blaming or shaming is because you think that something's gone wrong and somebody has to be at fault here for that. But if nothing's gone wrong, there's no shame, no blame. So sometimes when we're in a funk, we get going sour into shame. Why do we feel so ashamed that we're feeling crummy? Why? What? Why? 
I'll tell you why. Because shame is a lie. That means there's something wrong with you. So if you're feeling shame, then you're telling yourself the lie that there's something wrong with you. If you're laying in bed feeling bleh and you're like, oh, what is wrong with me? I need to get up out of bed and get some stuff done. And the house is a wreck and the kids are a wreck and I'm a wreck. And what's wrong with all of us? What is wrong with my life? What is wrong with me? That is shame. Okay. That is a lie. And the way to battle it, to drop the war with the shame is nothing has gone wrong here. Okay. Yeah, you're laying in bed. Yeah, your house is a mess. Yeah, your kids are a mess. Yeah, you're a mess. Everybody's a mess. What is the problem? There's not a problem here. It just is what it is right now. And seasons, balance with the seasons. So let's talk about seasons, okay? Oh, so many things. So nature, right, is teaching us about cycles. Um, and the feminists teach us about cycles right now that like that the the way our world goes around is based on a man's cycle. A man apparently is um, made in a 24 hour cycle with peak, um, operating hours between eight and five. <laughs> okay. And so that's why that's how our days are set up and even on a weekly cycle. And, um, and so the world revolves around their cycle that during the waking hours, during the sun hours of the day, um, that's, you know, the most productive time. And then at the end of the week, there's a weekend to recharge and then get back to work. That is how a man's body was designed. A woman's body was designed on a 28 day cycle. And so if you take how you think about one day and you stretch it out to 28 days, then it makes sense that there's some days that you need to rest, right? Just like there's some hours of the day that we need to rest. So there's some days that we need to rest, some days that we're at peak performance, some days that we're just sluggish. Some days we're feeling funk. Okay. Not a problem. It goes with, it's like once the scientists and the physiologists and all the things like <laughs> tell us that that's the way we were created, we're like, oh, okay, then it's not a problem. Why don't we just believe it's not a problem? Because it's the way it is. <laughs> it's like, we have to have the scientists give us scientific proof to tell us that it's okay, that it is the way it is. <laughs> it just is. Like if you are feeling this way, then you're feeling this way. It just is like, let's neutralize your circumstance. Stop resisting what is get present with reality instead of fighting reality, right? Let's drop the war on reality and accept what is. So you feel funky today. Great. Not a problem. Now what? Okay. So if it literally was not a problem, then what, what would you want to do today? So I've been writing a funk lately. <laughs> And that's why I've been wanting to talk about this because I've been experiencing it. And, um, oh, so many things. Hold on. We didn't finish talking about cycles. So one of the ways that I can find hope in the midst of the funk is that I know it'll end. Just like at nighttime, I know the sun's going to rise. So maybe the funk doesn't go on a 24 hour cycle like night and day does. But I do know from the symbol of nature of night and day that there will be, there will be sun again. There will be day eventually. <laughs> it will come. Okay. And so that gives me hope as I ride through the funk. Um, the other thing, speaking of, you know, Alaska or, you know, up in the poles where the sun doesn't shine as much. <laughs> and then you think about Florida or California or somewhere where it's like sunny all the time or, you know, across the equator that's like very hot all the time. I'm just thinking about the whole world in balance. Okay. So some places there's balance within the year of the different seasons and some places it's just balance within the world. Right. And so some people may be in a funk more and some people may never even experience this and have no idea what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> and overall it's balanced. So sorry if you're one of those people <laughs> that doesn't know what this means. And sorry if you're someone who doesn't know what the sunshine part feels like. But overall, in God's eternal scheme of things, as all of us as his children, it's balanced, okay? And what's so fun about that is that, um, you know, Christ talks about the church as a body. And, you know, some of us are the hands, some of us are the feet, some of us might be the spleen or the eyeballs, or there's like so many different members of the family. There's different members of the church, of the community, of the world, right? And that we all have a part to play. So you do not have to beat yourself up that you're funkier than somebody else. Maybe you're the ear and they're the eyeball. Like, why are we comparing apples and oranges here, you know? And so everyone has a part to play. 
If it wasn't a problem, then you could find what you can do to participate as a human being on this world in balance with all the other human beings and all our different personalities and all our different moods and all our different temperaments and all the different things instead of trying to fit into a cookie cutter box to all be the same. That is not the plan. That is not the reality. That is not what's happening around us. So why are we trying to make that what's happening? Okay. All right. So seasons, you know, four seasons in the year, day and night, and then our monthly cycles. It's all cyclical. Nothing has gone wrong here. It's all good. It's not fine, but it's all good. <laughs> okay. All right. So ride the funk is what I call it. Not working through a funk. Well, working through the funk as in there's something wrong here and we're trying to fix it. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about acceptance. Okay. We got to fill up our acceptance battery. Once we acknowledge, right? Awareness. These are three AAA batteries. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have all sorts of other episodes about this. So we have awareness of our funk, right? We're kind of realizing that we're not feeling tip top shape or whatever our mood. And then the acceptance piece. I'm telling you this podcast is all about the acceptance piece because we do want to get to the action, right? We're like, no, <laughs> I just want to get aligned. Where's that third AAA battery? So let's talk about alignment a little bit and the action line. First of all, we have to be in acceptance of where we are. And the biggest thought that helps me get there right now is that worth does not come from productivity. I'm pretty sure I have a hundred episodes about this too. I will continue to pound it from the rooftops because I'm trying to believe it myself. So if our worth does not come from our productivity, where does our worth come from? If we don't have to earn it by what we're doing and how clean our house is and how put together our kids look. You don't have to be productive. You don't have to be doing anything productive today in order to be a worthwhile human being on this planet. You just are because you are. God made you. God's good. You're good. That's it. It's all good. Okay. And now what do you want to do if you want to contribute, if you want to produce? That's great. That's awesome. That's bonus. <laughs> but it doesn't determine your worthiness. Okay. So if you are feeling so funky that the best you can do is just binge Netflix in your bed, eating true fruit, you're still as worthy as the day that you are like on fire down here, getting stuff done. The house is amazing. Your business is amazing. Your friendships are amazing. Everything's so good. You're still productive, just as worthy as the days that you're not. Okay. If you can believe that, then you're in acceptance. Okay. So moods, balance, Okay. So sometimes I'm in the mood to talk and sometimes I'm in the mood to listen. And my friends on Marco Polo know the difference <laughs> because <laughs> they get responses from me sometimes, or they get me starting the conversation and can't shut up <laughs> or they're carrying the conversation. They're leaving me all these messages and they're not getting responses because I'm eating it up. I love listening, but I'm just not really in the mood to respond to any of it right now. <laughs> And it's not a problem. Okay. So sometimes you're in the mood to listen. Sometimes I'm in the mood to talk. Sometimes I'm in the mood to learn. And sometimes I'm in the mood to teach. Sometimes there's podcasts like almost on the daily because I just can't stop myself from wanting to teach all the stuff that I'm learning or experiencing or going through. And I just want to teach it. I just want to share it. Right. And then there's sometimes where I'm like, oh, I guess I have to do a bare minimum of one podcast a week. Let me throw something together. Right. Sometimes I just want to learn. I just want to listen to other people's podcasts. I just want to um, consume. Right. Sometimes I want to contribute and sometimes I want to consume and nothing has gone wrong here. It's all good. It's balance. It's ebb and flow. It's light and dark. It's day and night. It's all good. It's a 50 50 concept. Right. So let's talk a little bit more about productivity. I know a lot of coaches listen to this podcast because I have a lot of coach friends and they're nice and supportive and listen to my podcast. And, um, and I love coaching coaches because it's just where my brain's at, like so entrenched, you know, and then I don't, I can just, anyway, I don't have to dumb things down. Well, not dumb it down, but like basic it down, you know, they're all kind of speaking my language anyway. So if you're a coach and you're trying to have a coaching business, <laughs> 
I know, girl. I know you're beating yourself up for your funk days because you think that you need to be productive every day. But I want to ask you something. Is your goal to have a successful business or to love your life? Mic drop. Come on. We are life coaches. (laughs) We're trying to coach people to love their lives. And sometimes because of our life coaching business, we're not loving our own life. We're using it as one more piece of ammo to beat ourselves up. Drop the war on that woman (laughs) or man. We're supposed to be loving our life. We're supposed to be the example of what's possible that you can love your life through these life coaching tools. And then we're using the tools to beat ourselves up and, and think that there's something wrong when we're in a funk. Nothing has gone wrong here. It's just part of life. So if you can love the funk, then you're loving life because you're not in resistance of the 50% of life that's not rainbows and daisies, okay? All right, my timer is warming, warning me that I can record for 30 minute max. I guess I can stop and start a new one and put them together, but I also have other things going on this morning. So, okay, let's wrap up 10 minutes and I have all these notes still. Okay, so... I've been going through this funk, right? And my coach was trying to coach me out of being in a funk. And I'm telling you, coaches, you do not need to coach yourself out of being in a funk. You can if you want. I know a lot of very successful coaches who do it whether they're in the mood or not. And so if you want to do that, go ahead and you can be very successful that way. But do you want a successful business or do you want to love your life? And I'm not saying they don't love their life. I'm sure they do because they're very successful coaches and I'm sure they coach themselves in all the most successful ways for them. The point is they're not doing it wrong. You're not doing it wrong either. You don't have to make them wrong to, you know, validate yourself. You don't have to make you wrong. No one's doing it wrong. Nothing's gone wrong here. Okay. So if they want to push through and grind through all the emotions, go ahead, whatever. Maybe that doesn't work for you. Okay. You do you boo. So if you have funky days and you can't produce anything, it's fine. If you have on days and you're producing it all, you know, what's really awesome. You can schedule it out on Instagram. (laughs) You can batch produce when you're feeling it. And then you just schedule Instagram to put it out or Canva even to put it out on your funky days. You can schedule around your own personal self. It's awesome. You don't have to fit into any box. You do you, boo. Do it however you want. Okay? Because nothing's gone wrong here. So, what does this tiny little note say? Um, no idea. Oh. Oh! Discipline. So, if you think that discipline is doing it even if you don't think, even if you don't feel like it, I have a radical thought for you. <laughs> what if discipline is listening to your body and doing what it needs. Being disciplined enough to not be in the cult of consistency, that's discipline, okay? Whoa, Emily's in the field now. Yeah, seriously though, because what is needful? I definitely don't have time for an Adam Miller Original Grace tangent here, but I always want to go into an Adam Miller Original Grace tangent, so go read that book. Um. What is needful? God gave us these bodies as our um, user manual. We've got to listen to our bodies and do what is needful for our bodies. It's not a problem. It's his, it's his gift to us. It's the whole point. We had to have these bodies to learn and progress and to grow. And that's the whole point of this earth life. So is it more disciplined to discipline the body into like fitting into some rigid schedule that was designed by who for what? Why? Like we just have to question these things, right? Or is it more disciplined to listen to your body, do what it needs and not make it a problem and trust that God's got you. God gave you this body. God gave you these moods. God gave you all the things. Okay. So it's up to you to decide like maybe what you need to learn is the discipline to do things even when you don't feel like it. Maybe what you need to learn is to feel like figure out what the message is when you don't quote unquote feel like it. Who knows? I don't know. For you, that's your job in this life to figure out. It's just something I'm noodling in about in my life. So a tree, right, goes through seasons. You don't look at that dead tree out there in the winter and be like, you're such a terrible tree. You know that in the spring, it's going to be so gorgeous. In the fall, it's going to be so gorgeous. And you know what? When the snow falls on that dead tree, 
quote unquote dead, right? There's no leaves on it. So we're calling it dead. That's so ridiculous. So beautiful. Even in the winter, it's beautiful. Okay. It's not a terrible tree because it's not producing what you think it's supposed to be producing. It's gorgeous all the time. And so are you, my friend, even a cicada or a cicada, is that how you call it? What do they do? They like, they <laughs> bury it underground for 14 years and they only come out and live for how long? <laughs> it's like, what is this animal about? <laughs> or hibernating or whatever. Like you just see it in nature everywhere. The balance of rest and productivity and it's all good nobody's looking at these bugs thinking oh they're such worthless bugs because they live underground for 14 years and they only come out and do their thing i'm like i'm grateful they only do their thing once every 14 years they're very loud and annoying as far as i can understand what i've learned about them anyway it's not that much clearly <laughs> anyway the point is not to produce it's to become okay we already are you are a good mom so just be, just be who you are. Okay. You do not have to do in order to prove that you're anything, that you're good because you just are. So just be and stop beating yourself up. <laughs> just be. Okay. That's how you become who you've always been is to just be. And I promise, yes, we'll talk about the do's and the don'ts and the, all the things, but the, you have your A-line coaches. Okay. There's all sorts of parenting coaches that'll tell you what to do and not do. And you'll use that as more ammo to beat yourself up. So then you come back to me <laughs> and I'll reassure you that you are good, whether you're doing those tips and tricks that the other parenting coaches are teaching you or not. Okay. That's the symbiotic nature we've got set up here. That is our balance. Okay. It is not my calling to tell you how to raise your kids. There's plenty of other parenting coaches that'll do that. I am here to assure you that you are good. No matter what you're doing or not doing, I promise you, it's who you are. And when you believe that, then you can be in alignment and do all the things that you want to do. I promise. Just try it for one day. If you're in bed watching Netflix, eating true fruit, drop the shame about it. You can feel a little bit of guilt because you're not necessarily living up to who you actually are. But there's nothing wrong with you. So just try this. Try dropping the shame. And I promise it's a lot easier to get out of bed when you're not bogged down by layers of shame. I'm telling you. So you don't have to guilt yourself into getting back to work. Okay. Everyone who needs your help will get your help in the right time that they need your help. Okay. I promise. Um, it serves no one to be, well, I don't know. I'm not going to umbrella that thought that it serves no one for you to be in the cult of consistency. It is helpful. And it has certainly served me to have successful coaches that are consistent. I love it. And I'm grateful. And you be you. And you're going to help your people in your own way. I promise you. So I think about, you know, I love to think about the chosen. It's like my fave right now. And he calls these disciples and then they're sitting around being bored. <laughs> and I know that it's not like a, a time um, a time machine that we went back in time and we're seeing the most accurate picture of what happened in the days of Jesus. But it is interesting to think that maybe that is how it went. Because in those days, what did people do with their day? There was a lot of mundane tasks they had to do. So they have the best news on earth that Christ is here, the Messiah has come. And then they're like chopping vegetables <laughs> or just sitting around in a tent. It's like, when are we going to spread this news? You know? And I think about the early pioneers when the church was restored and what did they do? They came out West and they were just tilling the ground and they're like, um, hello, shouldn't we be like spreading this message to the world? There's times and seasons people like, and sometimes according to our modern mentality of production equals value, which is false. Um, we feel like, we're worthless because we're not producing anything, but we are, okay, in a bigger eternal perspective. So get in touch with yourself, with God to know what you should and should not be doing right now, okay? Teach me all that I must be to live with him someday, okay? So we got to live by faith that we're becoming who he wants us to be. Of course, faith without works is dead. So we'll get into the works also, but we just have to get this out acceptance piece down. Okay. Balance overall. Um, I don't know what that note says. So it's all good. <laughs> Have I pounded the pulpit enough about how it's all good? Just ride your funk, trust it, 
get whatever messages you need from it, but you can't get any of the messages when you're buried in the layers of shame. So nothing has gone wrong here. There's nothing wrong with you. You got this, my friend. Believe you are a good mom. Okay. Love you. Talk to you next time. Bye. Hi, thanks so much for listening. Have you signed up for your RBC yet? What is an RBC? Well, it's a relationship boost call and I am gifting 365 of these for free this year. So go to dropthewar.com forward slash appointments to find a time that works for both of us. We'll hop on Zoom for a quick 15 to 20 minutes and all you got to do is have somebody in mind that you want to improve your relationship with. It's fun. It's easy. It's a good time. You're going to feel amazing afterwards and no strings attached. Just come on, have a great free coaching call and then go on your way. And you can come back for as many as you need because we know it's no one and done around here with relationships. So go to dropthewar.com forward slash appointments to find a time that works for both of us. And let's get boosting those relationships. See you there. Bye.